everybody. We're waiting on our lumber to be delivered for our porch at the trailer that we've been working on. So we're here today at our spec house to put in a pocket door. Today I'm at the spec house that we've been working on. I haven't shown a lot of this up to this point because most of the work you see behind me, we use subcontractors to do it and a lot of those guys are camera shy and did not want me filming them. So from here on out you'll see a lot more of the progress on this house. And Amanda is also here. This home is in a track of land that we purchased. There'll be six here total. We've already finished one that's a couple of doors down. We can add a few pictures of that if you'd like to see that. And we built it before we started the YouTube channel. There's a reason there's no video of the process of it getting done. So far here, we've got it framed up, insulation's in, we're waiting on drywall to come. And from there on out, we'll show you the entire process of finishing this home out. But like she said, today we are installing a pocket door and we have to get that done before our drywall gets here. Pocket door frames come in two versions. Ones like this that are pretty much already assembled. You just have to do a little bit of attachment for the track on top or they come like this where you have to put the whole thing together. So we're gonna show you guys both versions. Not because we're just that generous and wanna show you both ways, but because they didn't have both sizes we needed and the ones that are already pre-assembled. Because by far, we always use these when they're available because it's just so much quicker. I mean, there's like one piece to attach the top and then it goes in. They just didn't have the size we needed for the bathroom in the ones pre-made, so we had to buy this one. But luckily for you, you get to see both versions of how they're installed. top of the frame has a couple of little slots that allow this rail to fit inside. Once those rails are in the slots, you'll fasten this other end with either some screws or nails. In our case, we're going to use a couple of nails. Alright, so I've made a mistake when I picked out the pocket door this morning. I quickly glanced at the plan on my phone when I was in Home Depot to see what size I needed for this location. You can see here's the bathroom we're in now. This is the pocket door that I was trying to get. And I quickly glanced at this number here and grabbed a 24 inch door. Even though I noticed over here that this door I was getting, it was written in feet plus inches. So I knew that this door was supposed to be a 30 because it was two foot six inches. But for some reason, I saw that 24 and grabbed a 24 inch door. And the minute I put in, you can instantly see how I knew it was wrong because this gap here is way too big because it's for a 28 inch door. So my predicament now is do I disassemble this one I just put together and return it? Or do I add some additional framing here to make this 24 inch door work? The downside of that is you get a smaller opening into this closet here, which may not be a big deal because you won't be taking any large bulky items usually into your closet. I don't guess. The other downside is, as far as these fully assembled frames, they only had two sizes left at Home Depot. They had the 24 inch that we got, they had one of those left, and they had like four 32 inch doors, which I don't need. If I don't use this pocket door, I'm gonna have to get another frame like the first one I showed you that you fully assemble. And honestly, I don't know if they have any of those left. I had to go to Lowe's to get that one, and I pretty sure that was the only one on the shelf at Lowe's. Amanda left a few minutes ago to go get our kids from school. I'm gonna call her and get another opinion on this, see what she thinks. She thinks we should take this back and get the right size door because in her opinion, if a large door will fit and it was her house, she'd rather have the bigger door. And I kind of agree with that. I guess I'm going to take this back apart and return it to Home Depot and try to find another pocket door somewhere. So I'm going to call around and check and see if anyone has 
another pocket door. Okay, so yesterday was kind of a bust. We spent the morning picking up a couple of these pocket doors from different locations. This one didn't work, but we were able to locate one a town over, and Amanda went this morning and picked that one up. Unfortunately, it's the same kind as the other one I have in here that I have to assemble. Unfortunately, I'm not gonna be able to show you how to install two different styles of pocket doors, but maybe from the beginning you got a good idea how easy these are you basically just fasten the top to it and then once you get it plumb and level you'll attach this one in place that's pretty much it on these that's the reason i like these so much better because they're so much quicker but now we just need to get two of these put together and put in First thing you have to do on these is cut them to the size of your door. On this other style that I originally purchased, you buy those for the size door you're doing. Like this one was supposed to be for a 24, even though my door was a 28. So if you have a 28 inch door, you buy a 28 inch frame. On these, they come up to a 36 inch door. So any size pocket door you have up to a 36, you'll use the same frame and you'll just cut it for the size you need. And generously they pre-mark them for whatever size door you're doing. And for the top of the rail, You'll just go out till you get to the 28 inch there. Same thing, you cut that top. But then once that's done, you'll cut your rail back two inches from the end. And that just allows for a bracket to go on the end of this. It'll make a little more sense after I do it. Next, we need to set the header for the pocket door into the opening, but you'll need to account for there being a finished floor down. Cause right now, I mean, we're just on the slab. So if I just took that as my measurement, once the floor was in, there's a good chance that the door would just rub against the finished floor because I didn't account for it being there when I took this measurement. This side of the door frame is the bathroom. It's probably gonna be tile. And that side of the door frame is the closet and I think it's gonna be hardwood. And since we haven't picked our materials out yet, I don't know exactly what it's gonna be, but I'm pretty sure it's gonna be around 3 eighths of an inch. So that's what I'm gonna count for, because most of the tile we get, a lot of the hardwood is around that 3 eighths inch marker. I don't wanna have about a half inch clearance between the finished floor and the bottom of the door. So that puts me at around 7 eighths, and I'm just gonna go ahead and round up and give it a full inch. For the 80 inch door up, and then add an extra inch for the clearance underneath. So we're gonna put our mark at 81. Right now, I'm just gonna set it loosely with a nail. That way I can adjust my height to make sure I get it perfectly level before I permanently attach it with screws. Now before we permanently secure this, you wanna make sure that it's level. Ideally, you always wanna use as long as level that will work for the situation. I typically use my four foot level when I'm leveling these, but I left it at the other jobs I were working on in Verona. So this is all I had in my truck today to level this with. And it's not ideal, but I gotta make do with what I've got right here so I can get this done. It's a little after five and the sun is just about ready to set. I had to run to Home Depot to get some concrete screws because all the ones I had were way too long for what we're doing here, attaching that down. And I knew it was gonna be dark before I got all this finished, so I went ahead and picked myself up a little treat. I picked up this 20 volt light by DeWalt. I have some of their smaller flashlights, but in a big area like this, I mean, they're pretty much just gonna focus the light on what I'm doing. And I really want something that's gonna kinda light up this whole area. I don't know this is gonna do it, I hope so. I may do a full review of it later on, but for right now, I'm just gonna plug this up. I know it's kinda hard to tell because of the setting I have my camera on. Now I'm trying to absorb as much light as possible. It's actually getting pretty dark in here. So I'm gonna set this up and see if it helps. If 
can just keep myself from staring at it directly and burning out my retinas. I think it'll work pretty good. Yeah. You can see this one here just completely snapped off. So I guess what I'm gonna try to do is make my own hole and try again. I don't have much choice at this point. So I'm gonna try to put my own hole in this bracket and drill another hole and see if I can get a screw to take. Now it's just the same process for the other side of the door and for the middle brace. Next, you need to install this little bumper on the back side of your jam. That's for when the pocket door slides open. It has something soft to hit against so it doesn't just bang into this jam each time. Okay, it's getting almost too dark in here to film anymore. But that pretty much is the total install of the pocket door. As far as the door itself, I don't put that in until after the drywall goes up. I don't want to leave it in here where it'll be damaged while they're installing the drywall, and I don't think most people do that. I do have to get one more of these installed tonight because I'm going out of town this weekend and the drywall guys are supposed to be here on Monday. It's too dark for me to film this. Plus, I can go a little faster if I'm not having to rearrange the camera, so I'm gonna leave you here. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell that way you won't miss out on a future episode when we actually put in the pocket door as always thank you guys so much for watching and we'll see you next time